conference. It is my pleasure to thank you for showing up in the audience. Congratulations on what you are doing. The four shortlisted projects seen before are very good, the four of them. It's uh, timely to make them an important in this uh, framework. The link with uh, the outside world with families, uh, all the speakers that uh, dwelt on it. Let me quote to uh, Janice, because everything I know comes from uh, Janice Ferranz, who's here with me, from Jordi, over there. I learned from what you are up to in your classrooms. My idea today is what to do after 20 years. We are still talking about DT, educational and digital education, the E. It's important, let's still dwell on it. However, you all share this initiative, this solution. The digital education challenge is not a new uh, challenge on you, but that of the education fixing that challenge you face daily in your classrooms is fixing the challenge of education. It's not different from, uh, there is no difference with, between fixing the issues, the needs of change we go through now in our classrooms. It's not different from fixing the issues with the e, digital education. This is my topic today. It is one step uh, further made by projects uh, seen before. This uh, may be translated into a subject matter, into a way to go about it, into a uh, skills development agenda. However, we everything boils down to how we educate our kids for a DS, digital society. Let me start with uh, a technologist's quotation, a humorist himself, who in the 1950s uh, said this, which uh, frameworks our challenge. This is a challenge of uh, the E we every day face in our classrooms. Wise people will die out since we need people able to learn, to face, to get ready for a future an uncertain future, as you know it to be. For that, we need people or education getting us ready to make it, I quote uh, Cristobal Colon. We need a future-proof education. All technologists, I quote Janice, he is an antiquarian and archaeologists, eventually they deal with technologies that made us humans some uh, 30,000 years, in your case, or 800. Any new piece of technology creates a new world around us. Technologies uh, within our can, digital technologies are tools. Let's have a look at them as devices, gadgets, tools, software, specific things. We are missing out on the critical think about it, which is their impact because they change, they register with the way we live. They are forces. I quote Luciano Floridin, the best thinker, the best philosopher, about things technical and digital and how they influence our lives. It is an anthropologic social uh, uh, force uh, to be factored in that change the way we relate with the world, with our next one, the way we relate to ourselves. Technologies uh, change society, and society changes technologies as well. Both factors in the equation uh, match. They shape up our environment, a new reality for us, intellectually, since they change us as uh, uh, people and physically because they change our ways uh, to uh, socialize, the way we understand the, uh, ourselves, the way we approach uh, our next ones, which is totally different. We all share that. We all go through it every day in depth recently over the last 15 years. Our best uh, sociologist of the current uh, Sadie Castells said, we've changed forever our way to relate with information to consume it, to work, to love, to protest, and I add, to learn and to teach. We've deeply changed everything related to us. 
we've switched from a communication information con knowledge why the status of scarcity the school was built on. It was built on a situation with the scarcity of information and knowledge. It was the big proxy, the big pathway to access uh, information to an abundance regime. Let's ship up again the school as demanded, but set where we live. Let's adjust to that new environment of uh, plenty of, info, of uh, knowledge, information, which is hard, which uh, totally changes what we do, what we did, and how we went about it. The toolbox we have our ability conceptually, intellectually to understand and meet the, challenge, the challenges posed by these new technologies is very small. We still need better ways to think as educationalists, as citizens in the society. We need new ways to think in a better way about what's going on. This leads us to uh, extreme uh, positions to polarization. We have uh, gamifiers uh, around us always uh, warning us about uh, the risks of technology and also the puzzles of technology and also the radicals uh, who fight it. Let's uh, find the sort of in-between solution, equogenies. Let's uh, realize that uh, we need to deeply rethink in the society, schools, faculties, you, building now change, which is a critical change, I quote Castells. We build in a totally different way the environment where we are, which registers with us physically, relation-wide, and our, with our ways to think about ourselves. So my first uh, message by Janice uh, that brings us together here, we worry about, that pushes us forward, is that we need better ways what's going on. It's critical because education, schools, faculties should lead it, should think, should be players in this uh, debate, uh, helping us think and develop conceptual tools to understand this new world we go through now. A critical dimension here, I quote Janice, for us to rethink one of those industries. For good is education, let's rethink it. Let's develop new ways to educate, to teach, especially school-wide, new educational patterns uh, that make it with the challenges we face now. Let me stress, let's not be apathetic about it. Education's uh, apt to forget its past, not to mind the uh, past achievements, uh, past attempts at it. This is critical because uh, education, school education, can't do without technology. The history of education's uh, teaming with technology. School, as uh, we know it, is uh, teaming with technology. Our school organization, the way we arrange it right now, how our schools are as to a space layout, uh, corridors layout, uh, uh, curricula, uh, how departments are structured in the high school, uh, how um, students are broken down into grade, uh, to grades. This is related to the technology of education. It's a big technology that for millennia has set the current pattern of education, which is the handbook. Education all the time responded to uh, technology of its time. Now it's up to us to rethink, to re-engineer the whole process in our organization, how to work, how we work in order to face this new environment that's totally different where we are. Little by little, we transform it. Technology, I mean, edu and education go together. The history of education has changed long. For many years, we've been able to change what we had because we were not happy with it, because it failed to deliver on the society. This need of educational change in it, uh, technology has a role to play. Those of you who are veterans who have read about technology and education do know that for at least 100 years, we've always uh, fallen back on the 
silver bullet, a tool forever for change, educational change, information technologies that popped up. We started with cinema, eventually now it's a tablet. Technology has always been seen as a lever for change we've always needed, and governments reacted to it with investments. We've had big money given to technology entering the curricula for the last 20 years that didn't deliver as expected, that didn't come off. Let's say that that idea that technology could help us uh, make it with educational change didn't come off as expected. Somehow, let's say that technology, far from changing education, has reinforced in many cases, in most cases, all the approaches, all educational practices, traditional approaches to learning. We've failed as we did this now, and that the change in our previous experiences evidence how the ways to do it change and that we change our educational practices this far. However, let's say this has not been the case because it shows, as you know, that educational practice, what eventually happens in a classroom, in a school, when a student is with a teacher, is not set by technology. Technology doesn't set educational practice the teacher's hand. We need other things to change a teacher's hand, and there is much research into it. We know that for each uh, uh, survey with uh, positive effects this far of uh, technology in the classroom, we may find also papers telling that uh, effects are minimum or non existing or even deleterious. So we don't know. The way we've worked up to now doesn't seem to be the best one to input technology in educational practice and to improve, which is our ultimate goal, improving the performance of our studentship, helping them improve their performance. We have no consistent results, outcomes telling us this is the way to go. Let's uh, boil it down to the fact that history of educational technology, the relation between educational technology and students, is a case of a defaulted promise teaming with futures that have never uh, been realized, as has been the case up to now. Let's be aware of this uh, story is important because we have a lot to learn from it. We shouldn't relax on it. We shouldn't just hedge ourselves behind traditional practices, for instance, prohibition, because we fear because we don't know this. Uh, getting to know that case should bring us to understand the transforming potential of technology. Let's not uh, uh, do without it. It's a responsibility for schools, compulsory education. It is an important uh, compulsion to educate in and for technology. Let's educate for a digital world. This is a responsibility we can't duck. Our challenge now, maybe in the future, my problem with the faculty is which technology I use, whether I use it or not, what to do with the handset, what's my uh, handy management policy. Let's uh, rethink the way you do education, especially school education, because non-school informal education has different dynamics and features. School-based education with uh, specificities of its own has a challenge, that of re-engineering itself 100% for a society that, again, is digital. Again, I tell you that uh, technology doesn't boil down to a set of tools, but it uh, registers with us as people, registers with our environments, education-wide. It's even more the case. Whenever we think about technology as if it were but a toolbox, so we are wrong. We get it wrong. Technolo digital technologies, uh, ITs, are not a toolbox, but an environment for learning where we live now. So they deeply change. As you know, there are wise people in the audience. They do change our approach to literacy skills. They change the relation with, of our students What with what we used to call knowledge or content. They clearly ask for new ways to teach, to learn. They cancel 
That's why we need family's inputs into it. They cancel those walls. We've erased everything outside uh, the school and inside the school, informal, formal education, avenues, technologies, and not tools in education, but the context, the environment where we teach. This does change the act of uh, teaching. We live in a society of learning at a digital time. That, how odd, ask us to deeply change our construction and understanding, uh, teaching, and learning. So these are not tools. This set of uh, big tools is in an environment where learning exists. So let's input into Let's input it into our environment. We can't duck it, and it must be subordinated to the big players here who are faculties, teachers, and students. We can't uh, kick them aside. They are here to stay. I quote uh, a neuroscientist, we can't do without it. It's here to stay, and it will shape up for us soon what we do, how to do it, with whom, for what. This is a challenge for the school, a big challenge. Actually, for a long time, we have technologies, I quote Janice, in our schools. According to the stages in his uh, matrix, uh, processes first, advanced processes for communication purposes next, conversation, network making, it's always changing. Now we have issues with data, with privacy, many issues with it. Those technologies that penetrated the schools uh, did it in an atomized, in a, an isolated, in a one-off uh, way, uh, one student or one teacher or one classroom based, there was a cap on it. It failed to deeply change the learning process and didn't uh, register with the relation so we had in the school. Teachers use it more and more. We all use it more and more so, as well as the students. It's in our curriculums. It's a core skill to master, which is not deployed, but uh, in any communities that actually deploy what digital uh, so proficiency is. It's in our curriculum, in our practice, but it's still outside of uh, the educational core. And we fail to understand that it's not a set of tools, but actually it is environment where learning takes place. So today, Accepting some cases, uh, technologies still have to change what we do. Our more traditional, quote unquote, practices, because uh, there is nothing like traditional learning. But we all f understand what uh, mainstream uh, teaching implies. As of today, technology hasn't changed the mainstream <laughs> education with technology may scale up a good process of teaching, but the technology itself can't replace poor teaching, and that we are still to be alive to it, most of us dealing with education. Technology itself can't change practices. We, let's take a step further, as you know. Let's eventually do what we've always done, with, but with a different tool or device. This won't provide us with anything, anything with added value, with quality, it f will fail to deeply change what we need to change. Adding technology on top of our daily practice without uh, uh, questioning what we do now means nothing and may be uh, deleterious. We've seen cases of a careful design, of good translation, uh, of application to the whole educational community in a process of change, we realize technology to scale up our practices. This brings me to a different question I want to dwell on, maybe later, I'll do it. Let's be skillful, let's be skilled as faculty, as schools. I like Jenny's chart dealing with organizations because eventually it boils down to schools and their educational projects, what you are up to. We need skills. It's not only individual-based, but community-based in the school to be able to make the most of that potential implied by technology. Faculties, you, schools, 
must be fluent in things digital. You've always been conversant in your subject matters. You used to be conversant with the print. You mastered the printing, uh, hence your ability to transform people. We can't duck it. Let's uh, also be digitally aware. And I stress uh, Genesis message. It's, uh, it registers with you as uh, headmasters, the, as a school masters. This uh, change in educational practices doesn't imply technology only. There are no handbooks telling us how to go about things. It implies a cultural change, a mindset uh, change, a change in values, expectations, goals, uh, deliverables, mindsets. So what we do for the school to change, to have a school for ADS with or without technology, let's change our construction, our deep construction on education and learning first by students and faculties and by society as a whole. This far, technology against uh, outside it, it's just still a pending issue, an unsettled issue for us, it's not a single theory about it. We need a pedagogy for in with the network to educate with and in technology in a world that's uh, technological, digital, 100%. It's necessary. It is a must. It is compulsory to develop those educational models that are innovative, that uh, react to the challenge we face. Therefore, we need first to face the challenge of digital education, that of education. This brings me to my conclusion. We need more innovation, more capacity to change our teaching practice. Uh, uh, tech innovations uh, are better and better, are, but pedagogically speaking, are weak. And uh, let me dwell on it. We need much more organizational innovation because eventually, it's not uh, tool-based, but based on understanding that our environment where we work and educate is totally different. And there, tools don't matter that they change 24-7, but people, mindsets, uh, backgrounds, as I told you, as uh, told by Janice, we need a change there, as you said. A comprehensive cross-sectional cross systemic change, whatever you may call it, it should register with everything going on in the school, in the classroom, in the school. A specific school, not a general school, broad sense. Broadly speaking, all schools are different. I quote Janice, there is a specific environment for a specific school, for a specific environment, community, a faculty, or a specific students. This change in also registers with curriculums uh, where we should start, with methodologies, with uh, uh, teaching strategies, with the way we assess. It's related to equipment, uh, space layout, facilities layout, uh, professional development of, uh, of uh, 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 principals and faculties. It is a comprehensive change. This is a challenge we face transforming education to make it relevant, adjusted to the time we live now. Now, let me switch to reasons encouraging us uh, to be jovial about it first. We do understand better versus 40 years ago how educational processes work for change. Let me stress the relevance of the school there. Each school as a unit for change. The school is at the core of change and it's up. It is a master for each uh, principal school to develop the internal capacity to transform schools. In that process, let's involve the community as a whole. Change can be conducted without the input of the community. We learned 40 years ago something that uh, helped us understand that change, as seen in the cases of uh, failure of big policies we had, that is not uh, re related to laws. You can't order anyone how to do things. It's related to projects led by the school and professional practice eventually change is up to people, to schools, uh, to every one of you. The school, this is a general idea, a very strong one, is the engine for change. It's one, each one of you in your school who 
are able to promote a change, uh, more good news. Now we have internal capacity for that. We have the best faculty we need. We need no more better teachers. It's not an issue with people, but uh, with uh, the culture of the school that should be cooperative. And uh, all the schools have inside the ability to change. Uh, let's uh, push forward that uh, uh, potential. Let's uh, realize it. And that change is based on, uh, on developing educational projects at the school with, uh, uh, based on negotiations and cooperation, meeting basic challenges. First, why must we change? Second, what to change? Third, how to go about it? It is an essential question in Genesis Matrix to set priorities in that change process. My conclusion is that we know much about uh, change, uh, change at the core. Uh, the school is at uh, the core of a change, and the change doesn't imply technifying a school, a schools, but uh, people. Educational innovation depends on people. There has been a substantial increase in what we know about uh, learning processes. Over the last 40 years uh, in learning sciences, uh, broadly speaking, they provide us with information about how we better, how we best learn, which are the best practices to learn, to teach. We do know more, as uh, evidenced by other sciences, about how the learning process should be like. Uh, things as obvious, it may seem a truism as uh, uh, teaching doesn't imply learning. This we know, let's build on it. Uh, learning is not reproducing or copying reality. Learning, as we know, is an active process. We constantly build our way to approach the world based on exploration, on testing, on doing. We learn by doing and thinking about that. Uh, you learn to swim, swimming. So it's important to be able to decide whether I have to jump into the sea here. It doesn't matter what matters that I'm able to swim. Let's uh, fuel, it, fuel the change up by telling it that all legislation, legislation changes all over. In the last 15 years, uh, we've been set on skills, compet competences, and uh, I think that there, the input of technology is essential to develop that uh, skill-based knowledge. It's not sufficient, as we know. Acquiring uh, a, uh, education, it's not uh, teaching knowledge to students, but uh, training them to be able to transfer that knowledge, to use it, to translate it, to understand the world around them, to transform, again, the world where we live. I quote Benoit. Now, the school aims at, helped by technology, at developing in our students a set of skills of trusting themselves to be effective, I quote literally, in specific cases, combining in real time, it's difficult to do it, intellectual and emotional resources, that implies skills being able to transfer knowledge we work on in the classroom. This brings me to other things, i.e. working on trust, on self-confidence, management of effort, uh, teamwork, these skills we appreciate, we cherish so much now. Legislation itself brings us to realize the need to change our educational practices because the only way to work on those skills is doing it in project-based processes, whatever you call it. These brings me to a deep change in the way we organize ourselves cross-sectionally, uh, uh, breaking, uh, bridging divides, and here technology has a role to play. Let me add to top off why I think that the change is easier than it used to be 15 years ago. Technologies, as said by Janice, are different from the ones we used to have in the 1900s. Technologies helping us create, build up, develop that ability to work with the others, to use them, that's available. It's ubiquitous. Technologies now are used for that purpose. They are different, though, in character, all of them. Technologies account for a big opportunity. 
because they are tools and an environment, a big opportunity for us to change what we wanted to change for such a long time. The selective educational models set on contents, uh, making them into more training-oriented uh, teaching, more inclusive uh, teaching, uh, skill-based uh, teaching, non-transmissive learning, but active learning. That's what we aim at. Let me top off with three messages. First, uh, technology is not a tool, but an environment where we live now may help us, as we know, to perpetuate an education set on contents and transmission and acquisition of knowledge. It may help us develop skills for comprehensive uh, training of people. As requested uh, by society right now, technology as a tool in an environment may help us reproduce and expand all divides that a school education failed to uh, bridge. Educational inequalities related to social, uh, financial uh, factors may, wi may widen the divide, as you said. And it also works uh, the other way around to bridge that gap, those inequalities, and to honor our mandate, the right to learn not only that of uh, uh, going to school for the benefit of all our children, students. A big opportunity in it for us makes us uh, think about them in a holistic way. I wanted to share with you that it's necessary in the school, in the faculties, to rethink in depth what this new environment implies. Let's translate it to our daily business in the school. For that, we need a different approach to the uh, role played by technology in the school in order to uh, realize that, that power. And so we see that the true value of technologies as an ecosystem is for us to stop thinking about them as a set of tools, to stop thinking about them as something turning us more efficient, faster and even funnier to our students and to think about them as an open environment that can be modified by us that we can modify technologies in order to create a technology, an education that's appropriate for this digital society. No digital education, not just another education as it was the physical education or value-based education, or ethical education, and not more based on a traditional model, but a different education for the, for the digital society. And that's it. That's about <coughs> my presentation. I think that at the end of the day, the take-home message is that the challenge in education is no different. It means changing the way we teach to train comprehensive and uh, solidary people. And this, is, and this has to do with the way we organize ourselves, with our way we provide our teaching. It has to do with the way we assess. It has to do with the way we relate with the parents and the community. And this is the challenge, and it will never be a tech challenge. It will never be a device challenge, no matter how much we are concerned about it at a given point in time. It will not be a method of methodology, but an organizational challenge, a people's challenge that will require much leadership from you, which you know needs to be as distributed, as integrative, as comprehensive as possible. Let me conclude with these words by Paulo Freire, in that no one said this was going to be easy. Indeed, your work is going to be is more complicated than ever. The change we are requiring from education is not easy, but the challenge ahead is being able to turn challenges into possibilities. What we need are realizable hopes more optimism, more utopia, such as Ferran would put it uh, some years ago, so that we can have these hopeful visions that would lead us to where we think we should be. And this is something that we should be doing all together, but within your own value educational community.